This is Steve from Boxing UK in association with Supreme CBD. Delighted to be joined by Regis Progre. How are you, sir? All good, brother. Everything good, man. Are you back in New Orleans? No, no I live in, a, I'm back in Texas right now. I'm in Texas, in um, Houston, Texas. How is Dubai? Dubai was awesome, bro. Like, I miss it already. I miss Dubai already. I was, you know, when I was there, I missed being home, but now I miss being in Dubai. It's just, I mean, Dubai is a is an awesome place to be. Right, so, so we're going to do a UK angle here, Regis, if it's okay. Mm -hmm. And obviously, the, the, the main fight that everybody over here remembers you for is for that classic against Josh Taylor. Mm -hmm. um, first of all, it's a few years on, but do you still believe you won that fight? Still believe it, yeah. I still believe it. I watched it. I still think I won all that. So, yeah, still believe it. You've had three wins since then. Are you happy or are you a little bit frustrated with how the career's gone since the Josh Taylor fight? Um, Not really, bro. I mean, it's like the thing is, so a lot of people will say I wasn't active and I wasn't busy. But if you look at it, like, all right, so Josh Taylor, you know, he was the champion, right? He had the same amount of fights I had, basically. You know, like, it literally the same amount. So it's like everybody, you know, everything was slowed down because of COVID. Because, um. Yeah, after that, I was supposed to fight. Like, I was supposed to fight Maurice Hooker, but we couldn't come to terms. At first, COVID killed the fight. And then after that, it was the weight issue that killed the fight. I wanted to stay at 140. He wanted to go up to 147. So it was just like, um, you know, that kind of killed the fight. And so then after that, we kind of had to wait for a little while to get another fight. But since, all right, if you look at it, since me and Josh Taylor fought, he's fought three times. I fought three times, you know. So it's kind of the same thing. Everybody kind of been that's having the same type of activity level, really. I saw an interview the other day that you're sticking at 140 because you got the yeah. weight right. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, I got the weight right, man. Yeah. Um, I hired a nutritionist and I got the weight right now. So, you know, the, the whole thing that I've been doing, I've been doing things wrong my whole career. Like weight wise, I've been doing things wrong my whole career. I used to sit in saunas. I used to run with sauna suits on, killing myself, feeling real bad. Um, and now I just, I have it on point, man. Like I came in, I don't know if you saw the weight when I came in the fight against McKenna, I was 138.8. You know, that's the lightest I've been in years. You know, like I, I the, the fight before that, when I fought Ivan Redcatch, I was like 143 and I couldn't even, I couldn't go past that. Like my body was dead. So now, yeah, I'm, I'm going to stay, from, for right now, I'm going to stay at 140. I mean, I definitely want to rematch with Josh Taylor at 147. But for me, I mean, right now, I don't think he'll fight me anyway right now. Even if I go to 147, I don't think he'll fight me. But still, I, I want to stay at 140 and get a belt again. Good man. You mentioned Tyrone McKenna there. Was that a tougher fight than you expected? It, it wasn't, man. So the thing was, bro, I'm not going to lie. Like, one thing I have I have a problem with is, like, I, I haven't overlooked my opponents, you know? Like, because I, I train real hard and I just – I, I I I beat people up in sparring. I do real good in sparring, and I spar with like big old middleweights. So for this fight, I was sparring with middleweights and stuff, and I was doing real good against them. And so I looked at. I'm not gonna lie, like this is something I have bad to. I over I tend to overlook my opponent. So I looked at Tyron McKenna. I was like, oh, I'm gonna kill him. I'm gonna destroy him. Like the first punch I hit him with, I'm gonna knock him out of his boots. You know. So um, but he was definitely way tougher, bro. Like he was tough. He was definitely way tough. I thought that. I mean, I was in my room. I was in my hotel room, like, the day of the fight, and I was thinking, man, oh, man, as soon as I hit him, I might knock him out the ring. I might just, like, destroy him. And he ended up being way tougher than I thought he was going to be. We interviewed him the week before the fight, Regis, and he said when he hits you, he's just going to laugh and wave you forward. And we thought, yeah, that's one of those things that fight is safe. But, but he actually did, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. I was like, damn, like, he was, he was tough, man. And what, something he said – he was like at the at the weigh in, um, at the mock weigh in. He was like, "Man, you gon' one thing." He told me he was like, "Man, you gonna hit you gonna hit me and you gonna hurt your hand on my head." I'm like, "Bro, what?" So I was laughing. I'm like, "This is your plan. This is this is what you wanna do. Like, I'm gonna hit you and hurt my hand." And guess what? It ended like I'm, that's why I'm doing this right now. My hand is actually hurting a little bit. It's something. It's not broken. Luckily, I got an X-ray. None of my bro my bones is broken, but it is kind of hurting a little bit. So I'm kind of I'm kind of rehabbing a little bit right now. So his plan actually did work a little bit. Good man. Obviously, over here, there's a load of British names that have been linked with you straight away. But am I right in thinking you've got Jose to pay the first for the WBC? That's what it's. That's what it's looking like. You know, I think that's what it's looking like. But um, of course, you know, we'll see. But I think that's it's. You know, that's what they say. It's supposed to be me as a payer for the official title. So we'll see what happens. Fingers crossed. And 
if you win that title or if it's not to pay the next. Can, can I chuck the British names that I get in linked, Regis? Mm -hmm. the, the first one, obviously, Jack Catwell. Right, right, would right. You right. Champion, would you give Catwell a shot? Because I don't know what you thought of, of course. the whole Josh Taylor. Of course, I definitely would. I, I called him out. I don't know if you saw the fight, but I called Jack and I, I called him in the ring. I said, man, look, I got to call somebody to the ring. You know, I think he was commentating, but I said, man, I got to call Jack Catterall to the ring. And he couldn't come in the ring. But I said, yeah, I'll, I'll definitely give Jack Catterall a shot. Of course, if I'm a champion, bro, I'll definitely give him a shot. Um, and I, I want, but for me, I want big money fights. After that, I like to be a, to become a two-time champion at 140. After that, I want big, big money fights. So if Jack Catterall is a huge money fight for me, I will take, that's who I will take. I, I mean, it'll be just big, you know, just big names, big money fights. And I think, I, I do think me and Jack Catterall could make a, you know, could make a big fight, could make a massive fight. So, yeah, we can bring on Jack Catterall. Brilliant. Did, did you see the Capital Taylor fight? And just your quick thoughts on that controversy. We were ringside. Oh, sure. I've never seen. Uh, yeah. Right. He definitely won, man. He definitely won. You know, it's, it's sad. I, I said, I've been doing interviews forever about that, man. He, he definitely won the fight. Hands down, he won the fight. Um, it's just sad that, you know, it could be taken away from you just by the judges, man, because he would, he probably would never get the opportunity ever again in his life, not to become a world champion, but, but, but to become a four-belt world champion, an undisputed world champion in one fight, he might never get the opportunity ever again, you know? So it's just all going to be hearsay. It's all going to be he say, she say. You know, when he's an old man telling, talking to his grandkids one day, you know, he going to say, oh, yeah, I really, I really supposed to be undisputed champion. And, you know, Taylor, go, Taylor is going to be, I was undisputed champion. You know, he could be telling his grandkids, I was undisputed champion. Jack is going to be telling his kids, I was supposed to be. So it's all he said, she said. Of course, you can always go back and watch the fight. But he definitely really won that fight. But it's just sad that it was taken from him, you know. So for me, I definitely think he deserves a shot at the belt. And, you know, I would, for me, you know, like after, you know, after I become a champion again, I would definitely revisit that fight. Like I would definitely, like, want to give him opportunity for, to fight me to become a champion. Good man. Two other fighters that are under the Prevellum umbrella with you, Regis. Um, a lad from our neck of the woods, Lewis Ritson. Mm -hmm. At the press conference last week, the plan seems to be Lewis Ritson, he's back on winning ways, he's going to fight O'Hara Davies next. Okay. Sam Jones at Prevellum was talking your name as a potential mm -hmm. opponent for the winner of Ritson against O'Hara Davies. Mm -hmm. Your thoughts on that? Whatever. I, I mean, I was best supposed to fight. I mean, they kind of had me paired against Lewis Richardson for a long time now. You know, since since I came to the UK about three years ago, they told me about Lewis Richardson. So, yeah, man, I mean, me and Lewis Richardson, we can we can make that fight also. You know, me and Lewis Richardson, me and O'Hara Davies, um, you know, I, I yeah, any any one of them. You know, for me, I want to be a champion. And I like I said, I want to make – after I become a champion again, I do want to make the big fight. So if that's a big, huge fight, maybe in the UK, we could do it. Maybe in Dubai, maybe in Abu Dhabi, we could do that. So um, for me, it's whatever, man. I'm, I'm not going to, like, I, f I feel like anybody at 140, I'll fight anybody, you know. So, But it all, it will definitely have to make sense because I'm telling you right now, what I want to do, what I want to do is, you know, um, fight big, big money fights. Good man. Did we treat you well enough last time, Regis, for you to come back to the UK? I won't come back and fight. I don't think I'll come back and fight to the UK. I don't think it depends, man. I mean, ah, man, I, like, I'm not going to lie. I, I'll tell you, I'll tell you the honest truth. I've been saying it for a while, man. Like, so when I, when I, um, when I came there, I was excited. I'm not going to lie. When I came to the first, like, three, four days, I was excited to be there. And then after that, I was like, I was ready to go. Like, I was miserable out of my mind. I was miserable out of my mind, you know, because it was when I came, it was in October. It was rainy. It was just bad weather. And I was living, at the time, I was living in L.A. So L.A. is always shiny, always sunny, always nice weather. So it kind of just brought my mood down a lot, a lot. And then at the same time, I was stuck in the, I was just like a prisoner. I was, we was going to the gym and then going back to Airbnb every day, like just, and it was, I was miserable. I'm not gonna lie. I was just totally, totally miserable. As the as the fight got closer, my people started coming in. I started getting a, a, in a better mood. But for a long time, when I was out there, I was just man. I was just it was just miserable. I was I was very, very miserable out there. You know. So I don't know. It depends, man. It has to be. It'll. We'll have to talk about it. It have to be for a lot, a lot of money to give you back to the UK. And I, I think one thing I did wrong is. I stayed. I was there too long. Like so, when I went to Dubai, I was in Dubai for ten days. So 
10 days is a perfect, uh, like a perfect amount to get your body adjusted, get everything right and set, you know, so, and, and, and to, to be in a good mood and stuff like that too. And of course, Dubai is different from the UK, different from London, but still, but I was there when I came to, when I went, came to London, I was there for like a month. I was there three weeks before the fight. Now, of course, I stayed a few days after the fight, but I was there three weeks before the fight, and it was just like, I felt like it was just too long, you know, because I wanted to get adjusted. To, I wanted to get adjusted to the weather. I wanted to get, get to get adjusted to the time zone. I wanted to get adjusted to the food. But I felt like, man, three weeks was just, it was just too long because I was, I mean, I was absolutely miserable there for three weeks. My memory of you, Regis, for the fight week was, can you remember the Derek, you and Josh Taylor went on ahead of Derek Chisora? Mm -hmm. in the press conference and there was a little bit of a delay and still two hours after that you were still doing interviews and I thought my goodness me that's a long day for you yeah yeah I was I was I mean I was doing a lot man I was doing I just felt like man, I was doing a lot a lot of interviews doing while I was there I mean it's kind of something I had to do um but maybe it was a, I feel like maybe it was looking back I felt like maybe it was a little too much stuff because I was doing a, I was doing a lot of stuff there I really was and if I would have put that all that energy just into my training, I think it would have been it would have been better for me, you know, because now um, you know, I train I, I train three times a day. If people don't know, I train, you know, morning, I train evening and I train at nighttime. So all the stuff I was doing, it could have been like I could have been just using that to train basically. But I was doing I was I was doing a lot of I was doing a lot of interviews. And you know, while I was doing all the interviews, I'm pretty sure Josh Taylor was just resting or he was training or something like that. While I'm doing interviews, he's you know, he's resting or training or doing something else. So um, if I do come back, I mean, it's a learning experience. It's definitely a learning lesson, something that, you know, I can I can do better next time, if it is the next time. If I do come back, it depends. <laughs> Good man. You, you talked about your hand there, Regis. When can we expect you out realistically? I don't know. It depends. I mean, I have to talk to my manager. I have to talk to Pro Bellum and see what they're talking about. But, yeah, my hand – right now my hand is still – it's still a little messed up. I mean, I just fought, what, a week ago? A little over a week ago. So, you know, right now it's still fresh. I don't even want to think – matter of fact, I don't even want to think about boxing right now. Um, I'm still training, though. I'm, like – I'm still doing, like, weights and all that type of stuff. I, I'm a um, – I'm like a workaholic. I'm like, I love to just work out. That's what I like to do. I want to get stronger. But no, right now I'm not doing no boxing stuff. And of course, like I said, my left hand is kind of, I'm going, I'm doing like some rehab on my left hand right now. So, um, but it depends. I mean, they say, Probellum said I'll fight three times this year. So that's a busy year. So um, I think probably maybe like in the summertime, I'll be probably going back again. But of course now it all depends on what's going on with my hand. Lovely. Can, I, can I ask you three quick ones just to lighten the mood a little bit? Yeah, um, a big fight over here next month. Tyson Fury against Dillian White. Nice to get your thoughts, Regis, from you know somebody overseas. Not, not, not that. I, I mean, I got Tyson. I got Tyson Fury, man. I think Tyson Fury right now is um he just I think the best heavyweight in the world right now, man. Just he's so big, he's so strong, and um, he talks a good game. All the UK fighters talk a good game, of course. Y'all, y'all, y'all are very good at mental warfare. All the UK fighters are very good at mental warfare. But um, and then at the same time, just he his boxing IQ is so high, and he, his boxing skill is so high. So, yeah, um, I, I got Tyson Fury. Okay. When I told the media guys that I was interviewing you tonight, a whole number of them said, "Ask Regis if he knows who Marcus Rashford is." Do you know oh, you talk about the, the soccer player. I do now. Yeah, that's the one. That's the soccer player I took a picture with. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, I took a picture with. I, I didn't know at first. I mean, I don't really watch um, soccer too much. Football, um, I don't really watch it too much. But, I mean, after, you know, he texted me on Instagram and stuff, then I kind of looked him up and I saw who he was. Right. Last one. Uh, a little bit of topical. Does Will Smith lack power? Or does Chris Russell have a bloody good chin? <laughs> I mean, I don't know, man. Maybe was I don't know if Will Smith like the power or not, but um, I think everybody was saying Chris Rock probably got a good chin, you know, because it looked like Will Smith hit him pretty hard. So maybe maybe Chris Rock got a good chin. <laughs> good man, Regis. We hope to see you out soon. Uh, we definitely hope to see you over here soon. Despite what you said, it would still be great to have you back, man. Right, right, all right, cool. I'll, I'll think about it. it. Depends. They got to offer me a lot, a lot, a lot of money. Good man. We'll have a word. Read this program. Really appreciate your time. No problem, man. No problem. Take care. All right. Cheers.